Uh, welcome to one, one more session of the Financial Professions um, uh, webinar. Uh, today we have um, the profession that we're going to discuss today is, is investor relations. Uh, just a minor detail, when you talk about investor relations, we're, we're talking about company investor relations, which is usually uh, what prefer, people refer to when say investor relations. But of course, there are other types of investor relations, such as funds. Um, for example, it's very common. But here we're going to focus on, on company uh, investor relations. Uh, let me start as well by thanking uh, all the attendees, uh, all the seven affiliated universities, uh, which have been partnering up with us uh, in, in these events. And of course, the three speakers. Um, they, as you can imagine, they have very busy agendas and they, and, and they, they took time to, to, to spend here with us and, and, they, they are, and they are very kind to share their experience with us as, as well. So thank you, thank, thank you a lot to, to, to the three speakers, whom I'm going to present in a, in a few seconds. Uh, again, um, I always say this. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to say again. If you haven't taken the CFA or haven't started, we highly encourage you. Uh, it's it's a great way to learn, not only by taking the exams, but also uh, after uh, you you can uh, enroll in the membership and start attending to events. You get to know people. You get to learn also by coming to events. At least my from my own experience, it has been great, um, both the exams and uh, the networking experience. So let's start. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to start by introducing Anna, Anna Ngraij de Matos, who is also a CFA. She's currently an uh, Investor Relations Officer at, at Curtitera Mori. She has 30 years of experience. Actually, she started, started her career as a lecturer at Universidade do Porto and then worked for, uh, at BPI for over uh, 13 years, uh, having worked in asset management, proprietary trading, and later as head of international sales uh, and head of equity research. <clears throat> Sorry. She also worked for Morgan Stanley as a portfolio manager, and th this was in Madrid. She also was a founding partner of L LBV Asset Management uh, in London. She also worked as a managing director for Now Securities in, in, in London. And then she, she uh, joined Curti Amuri in, in 2017, uh, where she, she has worked uh, uh, as investor relations officer. Uh, she studied uh, at management in, at Universidade do Porto, and as, as I mentioned, she is a CFA uh, since 1988. So maybe the first CFA Portuguese woman in Portugal. I, I don't know if, if she is. Probably, probably yes. He's correct, and the third in yeah. Portugal. And the third in Portugal. Well, the third in Portugal, and the first one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, then, secondly, we don't have Otello. Otello couldn't make it, but he sent uh, Joao in his replacement. And João uh, Gonçalves Pereira, um, he, he, he works at, in the investor relations department. Actually, uh, he joined uh, in, in a very early uh, stage of his career. He did an internship at Santander, an internship at Associação Acredita Portugal. Also worked uh, briefly at, uh, as a consultant at InnoDev, and then joined Galp as a trainee. This was almost nine years ago. And he worked since then mostly uh, in, in the investment relations department. So we're going to hear about um, how, how we, about the, the how, um, about how the, his responsibilities and tasks have been changing uh, throughout uh, time. I think it's going to be interest, interesting. He studied. He took a bachelor uh, at Catolica in business, then a master in marketing at ISEG, and a postgraduate uh, in. Finance, uh, and that as well. Uh, thirdly, let me introduce uh, Pedro Santos. Pedro Santos uh, works at the Investor Relations Department at, at ATDP, and he did a, a, he did a, a, a summer internship at Farm Invest, Farm Farm Invest uh, in, um, at the beginning of his career, and then he joined EDP and has worked there there ever uh, ever since. And this was uh, he joined uh, EDP five years ago, so it has. Five years. He's also a CFA, um, and he studied management and finance at Nova. So, introductions made. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with Anna, which is the most most senior person. Um, so, could 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 help us understand um, what is? And I'm going to give you the most conceptual question. Could you help us understand what, what is the investor relation? Uh, what is the role of investor relations department? So, basically, what what does your team do, and what are its responsibilities? 
Portugal. And, and first of all, let me thank CFA Society Portugal for organizing this event and, and for, for the invitation. Uh, in, in its essence, uh, investor relations ensures that a, a listed company provides current and prospective investors with relevant, uh, um, accurate and timely information so that investors can make informed, uh, informed investment decisions. Um, what, what is this relevant uh, information? Everything that uh, can have an impact on the value of a company and includes uh, the company's financial and operating performance, sustainability and corporate governance, as well as business strategy, expansion targets, market positioning, positioning uh, industry dynamics. So uh, a really very comprehensive um, uh, information. Um, IR teams are typically are also um, tasked with uh, ensuring, ensuring compliance and, and uh, I mean, with regulatory uh, requirements regarding financial reporting, releasing financial data, publishing reports, managing communication with shareholders, um, and, and uh, coordinating uh, meetings with uh, investors and, and, and shareholders. Um, those are, uh, you know, in a very nutshell, what I think that the most important uh, roles of an IR. But I would just finalize by saying that IR is much more than this. It's also about uh, people and uh, creating relationships between people, uh, building um, relations both internally and, and externally, and, and building a, a track record of confidence of, uh, and trust, um, because that is essential for investors and analysts to, to gain confidence and to, 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 you know, to, to become uh, shareholders, uh, eventually become shareholders of this listed company. Thank you so much. Um, in, in order, uh, can you can you tell us a little a little bit about your team, how large it is, um, and and what the junior people do and the more senior people do? Is there a difference? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I mean that's that's very simple. Um, that's very simple because uh, I'm I'm the only one fully dedicated at Coursera Marine to uh, IR. So in that case, I, I'm sure that Joan and Pedro will be. Uh, um, able to, to, to provide more insights about how the, the, camp, the, the teams are, are, are structured. Uh, having said that, uh, of course, I, I do count. Do <laughs> Sorry? You do everything, basically. Uh, I mean, of course, I do count with, with the help of uh, and contribution of uh, different persons in, in diverse areas in, in the different business units of, uh, of, of the group. Uh, and of course, without their contributions and uh, availability, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to do that, my work with the same uh, consistency and, and, uh, and rigor, but uh, fully dedicated to, um, to IR. That's PR. So in that sense, um, that's, uh, that's the, the, a very different reality from that of, uh, of the other two companies um, present in this, uh, in this um, event. Thank you. So I'm going to turn to, to João. João, could you explain to us, uh, oh, like in a general idea, what's your main responsibilities and how did they change or how, how have they changed since you joined as a trainee? Um, of course. So, uh, first, let me start as Anna. Thank you very much for having me or having Galp, since you're not supposed to have me. Um, this being said, uh, I fully agree with uh, Anna's description of, of the IR department's uh, main role and, and activities, responsibilities, and so on. I would argue, at least at Gulp, on my perspective, uh, an IR team can have sort of two roles. One more, uh, so be a communications team, inform the market of all their, their, the financial strategy and so on. But then, at least here at Galp, we also have a strategic role to play. So at the end of the day, we are the first line of defense between the company and the capital market. So we are the ones, uh, it's our neck on the line, basically. We are the, the ones showing face. And uh, we are the first one to interact with our shareholders. Uh, so this means that we are in a from the market to within the company. So uh, uh, here uh, at Galp, beyond uh, all those tasks that, that Anna just perfectly described, we also do have an activity of playing a role like 
an advisory to the executive committee and to be able to advise and, and, and to chip in whenever we are having more strategic uh, discussions. Uh, and I have to be honest, for me, that's what uh, this is the main part that, that kept it interesting. This is me justifying why I've been doing IR for eight and a half years now. Um, but so technically, yes, I, I, I was born and raised at Galp. I, I'm a trainee from 2014. So I did like 95% of my career at Galp, of which 95% at investor relations. Uh, I started as a trainee. so my job was as lame as you might imagine so i did <laughs> um all the the analysis um all the hard work as you might imagine but i have to be honest doing the analyst work is what gives you the backbone to to then have the contents uh, and the robustness to, to pillars so you can grow within your organization so uh, don't look at it as a boring task. It's something that you need to survive and use as a learning experience because it will definitely give you the tools to face what comes after. So I started like that, running analysis, models, uh, uh, reading the sell side uh, reports, uh, discussing with our operating units on the key drivers of their performance. And throughout time, I've been uh, going up the, the food chain, let's call it. Today, I, I'm the second in command at IR. So basically the director says, I want to go right. I have to make the team go right. Uh, that's my main, my, my main job. So it's, it's, it's a bit different. So I'm, my time is nowadays is more focused on front office activities. So talking with investors and with analysts and managing the team, making sure that we are all in the same page and that everything is happen, uh, happening smoothly. Um, I would say this is broadly it. Um, How large is your, is your team? How many are you? My team uh, currently, uh, we are seven, including uh, uh, Otello, the director, and myself, yes. Nice, it's pretty large. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, it you want to say something else? No, sorry. You no, just saying we have an extensive coverage of cell side analysts that keep us occupied <laughs> and several <laughs> activities. And again, that that um, uh, strategy advisor role also keeps us busy all the time. So, Pedro, what about you? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about our time already? What, what your responsibilities are and how they compared to the ones that you had initially? Yeah, yeah. So uh, thanks for, for the invite uh, again. Um, I think that Joao and Dan already covered most of it. Um, so I started here already five years ago. At the time I was doing my master thesis and I was looking for a way to, to make some money because I thought I would have some free time. Uh, little did I know what an investor relations department would be. Um, and so at the time I had several pro several challenges because uh, one, I didn't know much about uh, the sector and I barely knew anything about the company. For instance, I barely knew that uh, we were in, uh, we were outside of Portugal and I can tell that we are already in 28 different countries. Um, also, I needed to, to understand exactly how the financial markets work in reality. This, um, this relationship between the sell side and the buy side and how the company can interact with, with uh, the different um, stakeholders um, and all the, the, the requirements we have to do, namely uh, with the CMVM and all that. Um, and also, I mean, I needed to develop my, my confidence to, to speak publicly. Um, and I mean, most of the times even being tested for something which you might not be expecting. And uh, I think that's like, the main role of the investor relations, at least in the front office part. Uh, you are like a chat GPT for your company. Um, but yeah, as Ron was saying, uh, you need to start from, from the bottom. And uh, at the time I was doing mostly uh, daily reports that we do. Uh, so we had this report in the morning where we summarize all the news and all the comments from the brokers, which is then sent to the management so that we make sure that they have all the most updated information of what's going on in the markets. Um, also, we had some some daily reports on on uh, summary of the market after the closing, um, and of course, then we had a lot of uh, ad hoc analysis to do, some models to to update, and presentations 
um, that had to be done to, to the board of the directors. And so we were doing the update of the slides. Um, it was mostly on uh, quarterly performance in the financial markets and all that. And also, I mean, the quarterly results um, that we also need to deliver to the market, uh, which also is a, a big part of the, the job uh, we do. Um, more recently, um, I'm also moving more towards the, the front office parts of the of, of our activity. Um, and so I'm more in contact with uh, the buy side and also the sell side. Um, and also I'm in charge of investor targeting, meaning uh, finding new investors, uh, looking at the shareholder structure, our, our shareholder structure, looking at the shareholder structure of other companies, uh, knowing about the, the, the largest movements, uh, knowing who we have to speak with. Um, and as you may know, we have carried on some capital increases over the last five years. Um, and so I think that this uh, task was was crucial in order to, to do it uh, successfully. Um, and I think that's that's mostly it. And how large is your team? How many are you at EDP? So it depends a lot, um, but uh, currently we are around five, six. Yeah, we are six currently. <coughs> Sorry. And actually, it's a question both for João and Pedro. I imagine that uh, you have only one model, right? For uh, or, or you have more than one. Because if you have only one model, how how you, ma how you manage a team uh, in a way that everyone is working with a model, or there's a person only one person that works in a model? How does it work? Like financial model, evaluation model. Well, nowadays I think it's interactive. Everyone works on it. Um, okay. We build it to, to to be able to last for long. So so have several people uh, providing inputs and uh, and Gulp is a lot of a, a commodity driven company. Basically, our financials go and flow according to commodity prices. Most of all, oil oil price. Uh, this being said, it's one of the key drivers or one of the key inputs that that then translates all uh, in, into all our key financials. So um, that's what we mostly play with. So key macro drivers uh, and see what what it translates to. Okay. Um, uh, Pedro, uh, one question specifically to you: um, how, how does it work the interaction between ADP and EDPRs? Uh, investor relation department because they, they're they're both listed and one own ones one owns a bit of, of the other one uh so uh, you got you guys interact at all um how does, how does it how does it work yeah that's a very interesting question actually mm -hmm. uh because um it has changed a lot over the time which i've been here um and when i first started uh, at least from my point of view uh edpr was like that uh distant cousin which you only see every once in a while and so there was not many interactions between the two um which i mean was not very correct because i mean we owned at the time 82 percent of the company um and the large share of our activity comes from there our investment for the next uh, coming years will almost entirely be focused on EDPR and most of the value from EDP comes directly from the stake that we have in our company nowadays. Okay. Um, but in early 2021, um, as you may recall, uh, Mr. Miguel Stilo, the CEO of EDP, became the CEO of also EDPR and also Mr. Rui Teixeira became the CFO of the two companies. And so that is a movement that was uh, not only at the management level, but it started being replicated in the lower levels. And so now you have several uh, teams, which for instance, may have um, a director based in EDPR renewables headquarters and the team is in Lisbon and the other way around. Um, nowadays, uh, since early 2022, Miguel Viana, which is the head of IR of EDP, mm -hmm. also became the head of IR of um, EDP Renewables. And so um, the two companies have been working uh, together much more, okay? And we have been uh, much more coordinated than we were before. Um, even for instance, when we have uh, interactions with, with investors, sometimes we may have a representative from each uh, team in, in the meeting. Um, 
and it's even very good because, for instance, if we have one team which at a specific time it's not um, doesn't have a very hard uh, workload, and the other uh, it's under the water, um, we may share the resources, and that's very good. For instance, in internal uh, presentations or even in the reporting uh, deliverables, we have to. deliver each water, uh, we may share some resources from one team to to the other. And so um, actually two teams have been working um, much right. more together. I actually have a friend that used to work at um, EDPR's best relation, uh, Francisco Beirão, do you know him? From, maybe, uh, I didn't know him, but, but yes, I recall his name. Okay, I think he's, 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 um, yeah, I think he left before I joined. The first people you, so, you mentioned is just EDP or both? Just an EDP, just an EDP. EDPR, how, how much do you have on the EDPR? EDPR, you have five people. Four now, actually. But soon will be five. <laughs> very well, very well. No, so it, it's 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 a large team. It's a ten people team. Then. Sorry. It's a ten people team. <laughs> basically, basically yes. Um, and also we have an investor relations team at at TVP Brazil. <laughs> oh. Which is another listed okay. subsidiary we have. I forgot that one. That's true. It's true. <laughs> Yeah. You're, you're yeah lot, although actually. as you yeah although as you may know we are currently uh doing an operation to take it private yeah. um exactly. so soon if we are successful we will only have two ir teams in the company okay. so um let's move on to the next question thank you so much uh let's move on to the next question i, I would ask anna if, you, if she could describe uh, one relevant event um i suggested the additions of Green sustainable commercial paper and bonds, but if you want to choose another one, please go ahead. Uh, and what was your role there? Um, and yes, could, if you could please. Uh, yes. Um, uh, uh, rather than really electing um, you know an event, and given the very specific uh, the specific of, of my work, I would probably take the question differently. Just okay. just as a background to say that before I join, I'm as I said, I'm the only one fully dedicated to IR. But before joining, uh, there was, I mean, the role of IR was taken by the CFO. So uh, as, a, as you can imagine, she could not, uh, I mean, could not be on the top of so much devoted time as, as it is, uh, as it is um, uh, my case. So in that sense, I, I think more than an event, as I was saying, I think it's much more what uh, I, um, I, I, a shift or um, uh, accomplished, I mean, the role that I have, let, let's put it this way, um, as helping to cultivate and maintain a, um, a relationship with the with investment uh, community, uh, while at the same time, of course, ensuring, ensuring uh, an accurate and uh, effective flow of information between Curtiseira Morin and its uh, shareholders, investors and, and analysts. And, and just for you to, to have an idea, since I joined the, the, the company, uh, we we have uh, we have expand, uh, expanded significantly the number of our investor investor base, um, as well as uh, we increase the number of analysts covering the stock, um, which I think it's a, a sign of, uh, of this consistency of, of work. Of course, if I say the number of analysts, I will get a little bit uh, embarrassed uh, with IRs of EDP and and, and Gulp. We just have 10, 10, 10 analysts covering us, and that explains why we do not have to have such a big, uh, uh, I mean, uh, team devoted to, I mean, just to speak with a sales side. I have a lot of time from EDP and, 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 Gulp, and, and Gulp team. So that's, that's quite, um, quite, uh, quite uh, different, I, I, I would say. And, and then I would also highlight, and, and then things in a way with what Sean said about uh, the strategic and how important is gathering the feedback from the outside, from shareholders. And uh, I, I think those are very important feedback, not only for the management team, which because at the end of the day, even if they, they spend a lot of time speaking with investors, both the CEO and the CFO at, at Kurt Seramorin, I spend even more time. So the feedback and uh, and the, 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 the information that we get for, get from from the shareholders and 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 investors, it's it's really very very important. And it's and it's also, I mean, these 
the interaction that I have, uh, or that I have, uh, that I, I've been having with the, the, the market uh, participants with different perspectives uh, and angles are, as I said, important uh, sources of information, but also of improvement. And, uh, and that's, uh, that again, more than a, an example, as I was saying, that the role is that we can um, fully align or better align, let's put it this way, what is uh, our reporting with uh, the, the needs and the concerns of, uh, of, of investors. Of course, I mean, there are other more specific events, but looking back, I would say that uh, those were the two most important roles I've, uh, I think I've, I've achieved as an IR of uh, quick ceremony. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe I'm going to ask then, uh, uh, Pedro, um, were you involved in the, um, in the ABV uh, in the capital increase that, that happened? If so, could, could you explain this, uh, what you did there? And actually, the, 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 the capital increase itself could give us a little bit of, of color, all the other all research people that say a bit of color on, on the, the <laughs> capital increase. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so um, in March, I think it was March 2nd or 3rd, Um, we announced the market that we would carry two capital increases, um, one at the parent company level um, and another one at the at the subsidiary DP renewables level for a total of uh, 2 billion uh, euros. Um, and so we have successfully done it um, at very low uh, discount to the closing uh, share price. And uh, we have done it with the help of um, some large um, sovereign wealth funds. And the remaining capital that was still outstanding, um, I can tell you that was shared across mostly long only investors, um, which we already had a, a connection with. Okay. Um, and to your point of what was our role in this. Um, actually, actually, a first question. Uh, uh, before. Yeah. Uh, could you explain the, the audience what, what, what uh, an ABV is? I think most people will, will not sure. know. Sure. So um, an ABV stands for Accelerated uh, Book Building. And um, it is a form of raising uh, equity, which is um, much more, uh, which, which is faster than a typical rights issue, um, in which you basically give rights to, to all the shareholders. Uh, you give equal rights to uh, every shareholder, uh, and it usually uh, takes, we have done one in 2020, and I think it took around one month in order for us to announce the capital increase and then uh, get the money. In an AB, uh, you can simply do it overnight, um, and you don't have to give rights to all the shareholders, okay? Which is uh, which can be tricky uh, in the sense that some shareholders, if they don't get in, uh, they can feel sort of uh, betrayed. Um, but uh, the, the the reason why we do it, it's because they are value accretive. Okay, um, and to 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 get to your point of what was our task, yeah. probably we need to go back uh, two years to three years. To the last AVB that we did at TDP Renewables uh, in early 2021, uh, which was a 1.5 billion capital increase, um, which at the time um, it was meant to to accelerate the growth um, in renewables, um, and it was not very successful, at least not as successful as these uh, latest ABBs. Um, because at the time the market was already starting to get scared from uh, raising inflation from the economic subsidies that were being given after the, the COVID. Um, and also uh, we had, the, the investors, investor relations had not been much involved um, in the process. Um, and so after that operation, um, we started to think, how could we improve in case we were to carry another operation like that one? And so uh, we worked with with one external party in order to identify potential large shareholders, uh, potential large investors, which could take a, a large stake um, in the company in order to complement our already existing ideas here at the at the IR. Um, 
and so our job really was to um, first come up with with the new names, um, and then uh, engage with them, um, identifying who was the correct institution, who was the correct contact, and then engage with them, which may seem like it's easy, but sometimes it takes a lot of emails and calls in order to get something from their from their side, and it can take a lot of time. And then uh, we had to do introductory calls, and that's where I was mostly involved, particularly with the head of IR, Miguel Viana. Uh, we were doing the calls um, in order to get them interested in our equity story. Um, and then, of course, a lot of impressions have dropped these last two years in order to help them with more specific questions, namely on how to model any particular part of the business. Um, and then when they get to a certain stage and uh, knowledge of the company, we start uh, introducing them to, to our management. And so at some point, our task was mostly to have them meeting regularly with, um, with our management. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also something that we did was that we started relying less on brokers and also relying more internally, doing more internalization of the process of uh, scheduling uh, meetings with investors so that mm. we could focus the management time just on the investors that we thought were really value accretive uh, to them, okay? And so basically the management was doing the meetings with the long only, the long only funds, those were, that were the largest ones. And uh, the IR was mostly focused on the edge funds um mm. and so that allowed us to, to really build a, a relationship with uh the investors most of whom then ended up participating in these two capital increases that we have done uh recently so it's true that the operation itself was a it was done overnight but the the job behind it was done over the past two three years okay so and and, and i think that's really where the investor relations can really add value to to the companies um, because really we have raised more capital and we have done it at much more favorable discount, um, which I think it's it's very positive and um, everyone recognized that. Well, sounds very interesting. You touch, you touch a lot of interesting points. One, one that you mentioned that is that you, you, you kind of um, did the work without the help of the brokerage or in, in the brokers in, in getting access to the, to the investors. You said it, right? It, Yes, to get actually, more ideas of uh, names. Yes. Okay. Actually, there's a there's a it was published a recent article in, in Financial Times. I'm not sure if you read it. Uh, that talks about the equity research, how, how it's then been a business that has been falling or they've been of been losing importance. And one of the topics I mentioned is exactly, exactly that. How, how, how investor relations uh, departments are are taking part of their jobs. Um, in, in, in including in, in reaching out to investors and doing like uh, uh, setting up visit, visits to the companies uh, to 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 to, um, to the plan. Sometimes uh, equity research people used to do that, and and, and now uh, investor, yeah, investor mm -hmm. departments have been taking that that part of the job from them. So their 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 job is now even harder because you know, all things have changed in the, in, the, in the last few years. Um, that that is very true um but to to add to your point uh, and this is probably from my experience but at least i've noticed uh that we get much more response from those large long onlys if we contact them directly and also uh you might you might have seen that uh large funds are starting to hire their corporate access teams uh which are specifically meant to do this uh, to engage with the companies directly um, and to bypass uh, the brokers of course they still have uh, a lot of value and uh, i don't think that they are replaceable we still use them a lot particularly imagine if we want to get to a much larger uh, crowd for instance if we want to do a very large group meeting um, it's a, it's much more easier to have them organize that for for us instead of reaching out to to hundreds of of investors. Yeah. So definitely, I think that they still hold a lot of value. And uh, for instance, after our CMD, we have done a roadshow in Europe and in the US, and it was fully our which took a lot of a lot of workload from us as we were preparing for um, the CMD, the Captain Markets presentation. Sorry. 
thank you. Uh, uh, João, um, is there an, a particular uh, event or operation? Uh, can, you want to talk about the, um, the joint venture that you had with, with ACES and then the, 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 um, the fact that you got bought the 25% the share that was remaining or do you want to do you have any other event that you would like to uh, could explain? I, I know you've been caught a little bit off guard because you were not counting on showing up here, <laughs> but, but if you, there's something you feel comfortable in talking about, uh, we'd be much appreciated. It, it has already been mentioned here. Investor relations needs to always be on its toes. So uh, I'm good at uh, at side, side being side, side blight sided uh, by uh, relevant events. Uh, I'm happy to talk about the, the, that, that transaction that you mentioned. But like Anna, I think I'm going to change the question. Okay. Um, I'm going either for a capital markets day, Peter was just touching on this, but basically it's the day or it's an investor day, the day that the company goes out and presents its strategy, its key milestones, key guidance, uh, what will the company be up to in the next few years. And uh, so the company goes out there and presents this to the capital market, the shareholders, uh, sell side analysts, everyone present in the capital markets. And uh, at least for me here at Galp, um, it's uh, the most important day of the year for, for the investor relations team. Um, we need, first, it's, it's uh, a multi-team effort. We need to be in deep connection with the planning and performance who does the plan, the business plan. We need to be in deep connection with the strategy team uh, who together with our input brings the strategy. We need to, to connect with the sustainability team to put together all our decarbonization ambitions and so on. Being traditionally an oil and gas company, you might imagine how relevant that part of the, the, the business is for us, the story. So putting all of this together and going up there one day, uh, demonstrating everything, making sure everything goes according to plan, then going road showing with potential investors and investors, shareholders, uh, explaining uh, the, 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 the strategy of the company, its mission. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so that's what I would highlight for me. The, the, the most fun thing to do is put together a capital markets day for, for our investors. Right. But M&A transactions are cool too. What, sorry, the MA transactions are cool oh. too, but they are more fun for the MA team actually. Oh, sure, it's a bit uh, ungrateful because the MA team does all the hard work and I just go out there presented and look cool. <laughs> so technically, that's my only job on, on an MA transaction. Okay, sounds good. Um, Anna, could you talk a little bit about the, the relationship that you, as, as uh, office uh, event relations, um, had? Uh, as have with a CFO, uh, which I imagine is, is a quite uh, uh, strong relation, uh, and also with with um, with the CFO. Yeah, I, um, I report um, to the CFO, but I'm in straight, I mean, direct contact with the CEO very, very often. Um, I mean, as as uh, as as. I mean, has been mentioned, I would say, or I think it's a, a you can read from what we 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 met, uh, said. Uh, at at the end, we the the, the investor relations team uh, uh, act as a kind of a bridge between what is the company's management and its shareholders, and it's it's difficult not to be, uh, you know, in very straight and close uh, close uh, close uh, or work closely with the uh, I mean the management uh, teams. And that's, you know, first, I think it's just to, to make sure that um, there is a full alignment, uh, what is, uh, and what is that, that the message that the, the, the sorry, the, the, ma the management uh, or the message, messages of the management are effectively uh, transmitted and conveyed to, to, to the investors. Uh, uh, of course, all the preparation and the reviewing of the financial reportings and earnings releases and the, all uh, investor related documents um, also have, I mean, there is a direct, uh, or we have to work closely with uh, with them i mean uh, i mentioned some are more in my case more uh, 
level, but sometimes, uh, of course, the CEO, there are issues that uh, the, we have also to to be, you know, very closer to to the to the CEO, and uh, and 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 then and then of course all all uh, as also as I also mentioned, uh, there is uh, the CEO and the CFO uh, meets and uh, has also uh, interactions with shareholders and and institutional investors. And uh, I mean, all the work of uh, coordinating meetings, conferences, uh, and other types of, uh, of, uh, of uh, interaction, interactions. And then I, I think uh, um, there is a second X of interaction uh, that I have, and I, I think it's common to all, all, uh, all the, the, the investor relations departments, and uh, which is this more strategic or what is um, what we can take from outside to to inside so providing uh, internal feedback to management how investors perceive the, um, the company because at the end uh, after they even if they they meet regularly with investors and, and shareholders we do spend much more time on investor calls and, and meetings and and we should be able to understand how investors uh, operate and to uh, to keep uh, management I informed about what are the market trends, uh, what is the, the, the investor sentiment, what are the best practices, and 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 sometimes even a little bit of what are the, the hot issues that uh, investors care, and that could have an impact on uh, on on the value of uh, of company and eventually to adjust. Uh, what to, or to report differently, or just to what we we have to adjust to make sure that uh, the the market perceives well what is the value of uh, of a company. Thank you. I actually have a, a question that was not in, uh, in the script, but I think is is fairly easy. Uh, um, do you spend much more time sp speak, talking with with with, um, with the brokers, with, with equity research analysts, or with investors, or is more or less it's the same amount of time? Uh, in my case, by far, by my case, by far, with investors. Uh, of course, I have to to spend time with. I mean, I, I speak with analysts for for sure. I'm very happy to to do that, but uh, I mean, much more with the investors. And uh, I mean. Um, just, I will be, I was just mentioning at the very beginning of, of I mean, the, the, this call that I will be road showing over the, the coming, uh, the coming weeks, every week I'll be on, on the road. And uh, that's, that's meeting with investors, basically conferences and meeting with investors. Um, yeah, so it's uh, by far, by far. Uh, Joan Pedro is the same thing? Um... And on front office, I would say definitely investors. Uh, me personally, I spend more time speaking with the sell side, with the brokers. Uh, but this, uh, Pedro touched a bit on this. At the end of the day, it's a hierarchy game. The, yeah. the more short-term focused guys end up me. So I handle the sell side and the edge funds. Othello handles the long onlys. Uh, so unfortunately, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we have to deal with, with, <laughs> with the difficult guys. But, but um, the edge funds have the more tough question. Yeah, yeah, it's more challenging, and I think that's that's funnier. Um, but uh, going to your point, um, I think maybe the investors take more time, but I think that they are much more concentrated, particularly after we re we report our results, um, and after the some breaks, for instance, the summer break, whereas uh, the interactions with the sell side are much more constant. And you're saying something? No, I was just going to add that, uh, uh, of course, I, I think that kind of hierarchy that Joel and Pedro were mentioning, of course, also applies in a smaller company as ours. The only thing is that, I mean, it's for the management. So, of course, I would say that the, the best quality investors are, I mean, are those that have more access to the CEO and the CFO. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, and then... I would have to take both the edge funds and the long onlys and the perspective. So, uh, but that's at the end of the day, I think it's fun in the way because you never know what is the, the question that we are getting, whilst probably on more those investors that know us better and that we, I mean, those that are with us for long, you can more. 
that people are concerned or are questions that are likely to come. And that's, that's no. also And I also feel that when, when there are meetings with the management, the questions are usually much more soft than with the IR. <laughs> Definitely. I agree. Fully agree. <laughs> the, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting, actually. And, uh, yeah, and, but of course, even though there's their hierarchy, uh, we also must provide support to, to the management in, in those meetings in case there's any more specific question or, or anything like that. I'm in, constantly taking the CEO behind the table. <laughs> and Anna mentioned um, a roadshow. Uh, can, can you guys tell us a little bit, a little bit about uh, how much time you spent um, on meetings outside, uh, um, outside your your workplace, or, or in um, in how much time you spend on online meetings or call meetings, or okay, any, any, I don't start. I can, I can, I can start. I, I don't have that statistic that I can share with you. More, just more or less, um, just an idea. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I would say, I mean, the COVID changed the way mm. uh, things. So uh, I would say that prior to COVID, there were a lot more uh, road shows and in-presence uh, meetings. Uh, of course, there were some calls, but probably that was not really the, the option of most of the investors. So at least in our in our case, then of course COVID changed everything. So everything moved virtual, and I think in a way some investors uh, probably you know just realize what are the advantages of uh, being at their homes i mean or their offices not having to to meet in presence uh, my my experience experience uh, since uh, i mean about may last year i would say is that people i mean depends on the markets and depends on investors but i would i would say that generally people are more keen to to meet in presence but there is much more virtual meetings that I had in, in the past. But in any case, I would say that, for instance, after the results, which is leaving these, these days because we released results uh, early last week, I will be on the road over the coming uh, weeks and, uh, you know, uh, and I will just make a stop at, by now. I, at least what is planned is on the second week of June. So I will be visiting some, sorry, the most important cities to meet with investors, explain the trends in Q1, um, and of course, clarifying any questions that there might might, might be. And uh, road shows, and of course, also important is the conferences, those that are typically organized by, by brokers, and where there will be a number of investors coming, and there is also an efficient way of meeting with um, different different investors. Um, my say aside, I would say I'm I'm fully aligned with Anna. Um, so back in 2019, we were constantly on the airplane. Uh, nowadays, is not uh, it's not that that's not the case. Uh, the, the virtual meetings uh, are much simpler, uh, much easier to secure access to management. For instance, it's, uh, I can convince my CEO to to get down the stairs to this room. Have a quick one-on-one -on -one with a with a, a key shareholder. I cannot convince him uh, like that to jump on the plane <laughs> to, to meet with a shareholder. Um, so it it became a lot easier. I would say uh, roughly we have like two hundred meetings per per annum, give or take. Uh, some years are more intense than others, um, so it does take a lot of time uh, and resources, and it's much cheaper nowadays. Much more, sorry, cheaper nowadays. Cheaper, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Pedro, is it the yeah. answer? So, or... I yes, I'm more or less aligned. I think that in 2020 everything was virtual, then in 2021, everyone um, was, I mean, it was more or less virtual, and then I think that in 2022 people started to get bored of virtual meetings, so they wanted more in person. But I think that nowadays we are getting to a middle. Um, and so we have more or less the same amount of in-person meetings and virtual meetings. Um, and also it's very good because for instance, if you have shareholders in Asia or in the US, you can in one day, start the day having meetings with uh, Asian investors and then the day do, doing meetings with with US investors without having to, to leave your desk. Um, and so I think that's that adds a lot of value um, and simplicity to 
to our business activity. Um, this a question is to, to Juana and Pedro. Uh, what you guys took the CFA? Juana took uh, many years ago. Uh, uh, Pedro took it more recently. Could you? Um, I would start with Anna. Could you tell us a little bit about um, how the CFA helped in your career? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was it was uh, very very important. Uh, as I said, it was a long time ago. I was um, I was uh, twenty eight, uh, three years of uh, experience more or less. So I, I think it was um, um, I, I don't know if it's an easy because taking the CFA it's never never easy, but a, a relatively easy way of keeping or gaining experience, professional experience in the buy side where where I was working at the time, and at the same time. Uh, broadening and consolidating um, the financial knowledge at the, this early stage of my 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 professional um, uh, career. Um, I mean, my experience at the time was that, uh, and I think it's uh, this that the study the, the study materials, and so th those that are considering taking the CFA, I, I think that even if the study materials are very extensive. Uh, overall, I, I I do not think that it was they were very difficult to 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 understand that the, the, the retaining all the information and applying them under time pressure was really the challenge, and in that in that I mean in that respect it's what we face on our work routines and our jobs. I would I would I would say there is so much information to absorb, to to think fast. To um, and and to act and that and the stress, I think that's that's really that was a, a good, a good a good a good um, way of, uh, of 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 I mean a good school I would say, and also also implied to to be, to do a very well a best way to, our best way to manage very well our time because I was working and taking the CFA at the same time. That's That was one thing. And then, of course, this strong balance ship, uh, stronger background, I mean, um, help, of course, to, to the ability and to be able to relate to different fields of, uh, of, of knowledge that were essential to perform different roles in, in, in my professional career. As, as Miguel mentioned, I work, I've worked on the buy side, I've worked on the sales side, I work on, on sales, I work on, on, on research, I work on hedge funds, on prop trades, on asset management, and now as investor relation officer. I do not have experience, prior experience on investor relations prior joining to, uh, to Curtis Aramuri, uh, but of course I've met hundreds or thousands of uh, investor relations of CEOs of CFOs. I met EDP, Gulp, EDPR, EDP, oh, you know, a lot of companies, different teams. And of course, that was a great uh, school for my uh, current uh, current uh, job. Uh, but of course, that was possible because I, I took the initial steps and I think the CFA was really important. And, and, and just, to, um, just to finalize, that uh, as uh, at the time that I took the the, the, the CFA, uh, the CFA, I, I think that uh, this uh, being a worldwide uh, recognized charter uh, and a mark of uh, excellence in in investment in the investment industry, I think open or help, was helpful in, in opening uh, new doors and to access uh, opportunities outside outside Portugal. I think at the time was was. Uh, was was also uh, uh, different and and important. Thank you, Anna. Pedro. Yeah, I think Anna basically uh, said it all. So um, I started doing the CFI while I was in the second year of my career, I think. Um, and so at the time, as I was said it uh, in the beginning. I want to get a better grasp of how the financial markets really work. Um, and so I think that the CFA has really helped me because its curriculum, it's very uh, complete. Um, and, and it's also uh, a, a, bit, a bit deep. And, and that's perfect because you want to understand uh, if you want to get a, a good grasp of uh, different uh, players within within the market, be it in the equity, uh, buy side or sell side, or even the, in the uh, fixed income side. And I think that's that's very good. Um, and then <laughs> it also helped me in the investor relations uh, department because I was 
able to better understand uh, what the people I speak with uh, are doing and why are they asking me certain questions. And so uh, knowing that, I can tailor my answer much better to, to their needs. Um, and so I think it, it helped me a lot on that, on that front. And um, last but not least, I mean, as Zana was saying, uh, I think that the CFA uh, markets really recognized uh, throughout the, the the investor industry, and it's very well uh, recognized, and people appreciate it not only because of the its quality, but also because um, when you are doing it, you are most likely working full time job at the same time, and so doing the, the two things at the same time it's very difficult, um, and so it proves that you are able to to work under a lot of stress and organize yourself very well. Thank you so much, Pedro. We're running out of time, so, so we're going to, to the last question. And basically, it's, uh, what tip or tips would you give to someone who is currently at the university and would like to pursue a career uh, in investor relations? Um, who wants to start? Mm. Maybe João? Who was ah, uh, sure. Um, I would say one tip, it's pretty obvious by, by this conversation, which is grab a question and make it a seven minute answer. So <laughs> we, were, we were, are all experts on that one. Uh, this being said, uh, for me, it's the, the big picture. Uh, I think we are, we are often engaged in our own companies, uh, deals, operations, uh, actions, and so on. But for me, the crucial point of an investor relations is don't lose sight of the big picture. So don't stay too focused on the tree, always look at the forest. Uh, so have that ability to, to, to extract yourself, have the helicopter vision, for me, it's key. Thank you. Maybe Anna, any recommendation that you give to someone um, to start, I mean, I do not have the experience of just starting from university to, to, to uh, IR, but uh, I, I agree with Joel. Uh, I think he, he, it, um, it requires that to not only have this forest view, but also to be able to trees and uh, the leaves and the trunk, as it is a case of a cork tree, which is, uh, you cannot imagine how many questions they ask about cork and cork tree that never came to, 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 to my mind. So you also have to go uh, into the details. And I, I think it's really very diversified and every day is different from, from the other because you get different interactions and different things from, uh, from, from, the, from the investors. And, and just not taking too much time just to, to say that it's not just about financials, it's also about uh, strategy, positioning, uh, industry trends, communicating. So it's a really very comprehensive and complete um, work. So um, it, it's, it's for, I mean, in my view, it's, it's, it's fun as well. It's fun as well <laughs> and challenging. Thank you, Anna. Pedro, last one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's a good one. I think that uh, if you are in this session, you already know more than I did back when I was studying. So that's that's already a very good tip. Um, and then, I mean, um, I, th I think it's a very, good, uh, very exciting uh, job because you get to know a lot about the company and you 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 can understand what are the management. Um, concerns and what are they thinking about and I think that's very interesting particularly if you are starting off uh, as an invest your career as an investor relations uh, I think that that helicopter view can really get you um, a better formed opinion on what you should do next and what you like or what you don't like be it in the company you are or outside of the company um, and I think that the skills that you manage to to develop in a company in, in a in a team like like this on the investor relations department, it's very much appreciated by people not only within the company but also um, outside. And so, I think it's a very good start of of the career. Maybe my opinion is a bit biased, um, but I but I truly believe it. I feel that I never worked in investor relations, but I feel it's a very diverse uh, job, right? You have to be good with math and numbers. You have to be good, good, be good at a good communicator. You have to write good as well because you're probably communicating um, uh, by email. 
Um, I, I think it's a very diverse role. It's what I feel like without, from an external point of view. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Anna. Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you so much, Pedro. Uh, all the attendees, thank you so much as well. Uh, this is the last uh, session of this year. We'll, we'll probably be, be back in September or October with, with another financial profession. Uh, so th thank you all. Uh, again, thank you all, you three. And see you in October for the people that are coming again in October. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.